All right, so we need to go ahead and talk about the rest of the arc and angle relationships in a circle. We've talked about a couple already. Central angles, uh, vertex at the center, their measure is equal to the uh, measure of the arc in front of it. Inscribed angles, the vertex is on the circle, its measure is equal to half the arc in front of it. Uh, and there are um, a bunch more from, the, uh, from, from there, okay? Um, so, uh, the first one is if you, uh, and so there are different segments, different lines that can be drawn in circles, and um, the relationships all depend on what lines and, and segments we're talking about. So, first theorem here, if a tangent and a chord intersect at a point, um, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc, all right? Anyway, if the vertex is on, and um, on your spinner we have those windows, vertex is on, then whether it's an inscribed angle where the angle is completely inside the circle or if it's an angle like this where the vertex is on and it was created by a chord and a tangent, it's still going to be the same. The angle is still going to be half the arc that it's looking at. So angle 1 is still going to be half this arc AB. Okay, and These are all formulas that we can kind of plug into and... <clears throat> um, and use, okay? So that's the first one. So something like this, right? If we, if we have a tangent and a chord that are intersecting and we want to find this angle, angle one, then it will be half the arc that it's looking at. And it's looking at this arc right here, okay? So angle one, pretty simply, 284 divided by two gets you 142, all right? Um, if you have a couple of chords that intersect, they could intersect at the center, which would create central angles, which would mean that the angles are equal to the arc. Or <clears throat> the two chords could cross off of the center and no longer have the vertex at the center for those angles. If that's the case, then the formula that we get is... Um, the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle. So, in other words, in your spinner, what we have is that the angle equals the front arc plus the back arc divided by two, right? And here's the angle one. Here's the angle we want to find. The front arc is just the arc that it's looking at. The back arc would be the arc right behind it. So this guy right here. So AC plus BD divided by 2 would get you the measure of angle 1. <clears throat> okay. And again, a formula. We may know the angle sometimes. Sometimes we may not know the angle and um, need to find an arc or, or, or have both arcs. Or sometimes we, we'll, we won't know one of the arcs and we know the angle. And it's a, we can just plug in the information that we've got and solve an equation. Okay, so a uh, quick example of this theorem. We've got these two chords that are crossing. They're not at the center, at least not as far as we can tell. So the um, measure of angle one is simply going to be uh, this front arc, which is 58, plus the back arc, which is 72, and divided by 2. All right, so this is going to be 130 divided by 2, which is going to get you 65. Okay, so 65 degrees. Next theorem involves a um, secant and a tangent. And if a secant and a tangent intersect, now the vertex is outside the circle. And if the vertex is outside the circle, um, then the way we find the angle measure is actually going to be the same no matter what two lines or segments are creating um, this angle. If the vertex is outside the circle, then again in your spinner what we have is the angle is equal to the big arc minus the small arc divided by 2. And what that means is when you trace out the angles, there will be two arcs that are intercepted by this angle. And inevitably there will be a bigger one and a smaller one. 
and we have to take the bigger one minus the smaller one and divide it by 2. Obviously, you can't go small minus big divided by 2 because that would give you a negative angle measure, and we can't have negative angle measures. So the bigger one minus the smaller one divided by 2. We don't really care what this arc measure is out here unless we need it to find one of the other two, right? But we're not going to use it to help us find the angle. Right? So, example of a secant and a tangent intersecting is right here. If we want to find the measure of angle 1, we're just going to go big arc minus the small arc divided by 2. Now, here's the big arc, and here's the small arc. For the big arc, we don't know. The small arc is 134 divided by 2. Now, the thing is, we do know this arc, which is 12. So if we want to find the big arc, which is the third remaining piece of this circle, then we can simply add 134 and 12 and subtract from one, uh, one, I'm sorry, 360. So if we go 360 minus 146, right, that will get us 214. So this guy is going to be 214. So now I can plug in 214 for the big arc and finish my angle. Right, so this is going to be 80 divided by 2, and so the measure of angle 1 is going to be 40 degrees. So while we don't need the 12 degree arc to help us find angle 1, we did, we did need it to help us find one of the arcs to help us find angle 1. Okay? Right. Um, next theorem involves uh, two tangents, right? When two tangents cross, it's the same thing. The vertex will be outside the circle, and so we're still going to use this big minus small divided by 2, okay? The big arc is here. The small arc is here, okay? Now, if you notice, two tangents, the way that the tangents are set up, they just bisect, not bisect, they just cut the circle up into two arcs. Um, and so there are a lot of ways we can um, find this angle in a lot of different ways, problems can set up with this, right? One of the ways, and I think this is 235, um, in the example down below, not next to the theorem, but down below, the, the, the examples got mixed up for these next two theorems. I believe this was 235. Well, if we wanted to find this arc, then we can still use the formula of big... minus small divided by 2. Now the angle is 45 degrees. The big arc is 235. Okay, minus x over 2. Okay, well, we actually don't need this formula, but anyway, we can go ahead and use it just so we can get used to using it. So, Solve, right? I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Uh, we get 90 equals 235 minus x. Now if I add x, subtract 90, okay, we will get, right, 145 degrees. Now, of course, we could have just subtracted 235 from 360 and gotten 145 degrees. Okay. Um, but that's okay. I want to get used to using the formula. All right? All right. And um, next guy here, talking about if, a, uh, if, if two secants meet. So now we're still talking about the vertex being outside the circle. If you trace the angle out, then the only arcs that we need to find the angle are these two, BD and AC. We're still going to use big minus small divided by 2. Okay? But they're just the arcs inside the angle. Those are the arcs that we need, just the ones that are inside the angle. All right? The other two we might need to find one of the arcs in the angle, but... Ultimately, we don't need them to find the angle itself. All right? Uh, so, quick example of this, pretty straightforward example. If we want to find the measure of angle 1, we're just going to use big minus small divided by 2. 
the big arc is the bigger arc inside the angle, which is 92, minus the small arc inside the angle, which is 43, divided by 2. So this is going to be 49 divided by 2, which is 24.5 degrees. Okay? And that's it. The, those are all the angle relationships. So really, the, the question becomes, where's the vertex? Is the vertex of the angle inside, outside, or on the circle? Depending on where the vertex is, that will dictate how we find angle measures or what formula we're going to use, right? So some quick examples here for you. And then we're just going to mix them all up. So first, take a look at this. Figure out which formula you got to use. And then go try to find the angle. You can stop the video, give it a shot, and start it back up and see how you do. Okay? So, question's got to be, we're talking about arcs and angles. So, if you've got your spinner out there, hopefully you're using it. Use the side of your spinner that says angles. Right? The angles in, in a circle. The vertex is inside the circle. So, vertex inside, not at the center. And if you go to that pi piece, it will tell you that the angle is equal to front plus back divided by 2. So angle 1 will be equal to the front plus the back divided by 2. Okay, so this is going to get you 296 divided by 2, which will get you 140. Eight. Eight. There you go. Okay. Next. Try it. Stop the video. Start it back up. See if you're right. Okay. So the question is, where's the vertex? Inside, outside, or on? And the vertex is outside. In your vertex outside window, it will tell you that the angle is equal to big minus small divided by 2. The big is the bigger arc inside the angle, which is 104. Small is the smaller arc inside the angle, which is 38, and divided by 2. Okay, so you subtract that, uh, let's see, 74, what is that, 66, divided by 2, and it gets you 33. Hopefully my math is right there. Okay, next, try it, see what you get. Okay, where is the vertex, inside, outside, or on? The vertex is inside. Is it at the center? No. So you need to go to the vertex inside, not at the center pi piece, which would tell you that the angle is equal to front plus back divided by 2. Here we know the angle. The angle is 115. So I can put that in here. The front arc is the arc that it's looking at, which is x. The back arc is 105. And we're going to divide it by 2. So multiply both sides by 2. And we get 230 equals x plus 105. Now subtract 105, and you get 125. And we're done. And last one here. Take a look. Figure out what angle 1 is. Start the video and see if you're right. Okay. Where is the vertex? Inside, outside, or on? Well, it's outside. So we need the uh, vertex outside formula, which is angle equals big minus small divided by 2. Angle 1 is what we're looking at. Okay. And... The big is this guy right here, and the small is this arc in here. So the big is 134. The problem is right now we don't know what the small is. But we can find it because we know this arc and we know this arc. 
So we can add those two up and subtract from 360 to find the third one. So this is going to be uh, 170 plus 134, which is going to be 304. Subtract that from 360, and you get 56. So this arc is 56, so we're going to place 56 in here. And now just do your arithmetic. Um, let's see, what is that? 50, 78 divided by 2, which is 39. So angle 1 is 39. All right? So keep using that, that spinner. Hopefully you're finding that very useful. Um, where's the vertex? Inside, outside, or on? That will tell you what formula to use. Plug in the numbers where you should and go solve for what you're missing. Okay? Um, homework's out in Canvas. Make sure you get that done by next time.